General Flynn, who's been part of our intelligence agencies for years under several presidents, issues a major warning to Trump, saying, you, you better watch yourself. You better make sure that you have the right protection because they're coming for you. Now, why does he say that? We're going to go in depth on that in just a few moments. Not only that, the protests are taking off in these big cities, especially in New York. It's amazing of who is actually protesting, who's leading these protests. We're going to talk about that today. And also, what is the Democrats' plan and Biden's plan and Harris's plan for the Supreme Court previous to the inauguration? It may surprise you. This is where the Republicans better hold on gain a backbone, and actually do their job. Let's dive into these stories today. This video starts right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here today. If you notice, we're under porch again. It is flooding. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm trying to make sure my mic works, but I hope that you can hear me fine. Uh, it is a bad, bad storm. It's too dark to actually film just about anywhere else. So hopefully the rain is not too bad. Again, if you're new to the channel, go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell. Give us a thumbs up if you like the content. We humbly thank you for being here because when you watch it, it helps us spread our message across this platform. So thank you so very much. Michael Flynn, General Flynn, who has been brought through the ringers back in the, the years of uh, right when Trump was fixing to get into office. Um, and remember, Flynn served under not only Trump, he served under Obama. And actually, Obama was the one that kind of threw him under the bus. Now, I, I really do hope that Trump brings him back. There was some good news that Trump was not bringing back Pompeo or Haley, which are, are great moves, especially for the MAGA movement versus the establishment movement. But let's, let's go back to what General Flynn just said. He actually served in the Director of Intelligence, where he knew a lot of things, and actually probably more than he can actually discuss. But he came out and said, first they tried to take Trump off the ballot, then they tried to throw him behind bars. And when that didn't work, they went after his life. But now, General Flynn warns that it can happen again. During the opening conversations with Mr. Bannon, Flynn told Trump's inner circle to brace for another attempt on Trump's life before he reaches the Oval Office in January. Think about that. That means his life is always at risk. We know that. That's why presidents have all this guard. But there has been threat after threat after threat. Did you see the, the, the Broadway show? There was a, a group of individuals at an arts college that were literally doing a kind of like a, a montage of a play based on the last few current events. Every one of them had a uh, this aiming at him during a show. And then we, we, we hear the rhetoric that, that um, <clears throat> and then we hear all these TikTok stars wishing ill will and, and and again, the left is not stopping with their rhetoric on calling him a fascist and how he's going to ruin everyone's life. I mean, these people are deranged. And you don't believe me, the suicide numbers. Did you see the guy who killed his wife and then his children too? Because he was so upset that Trump was going to be back in the White House. This is what media and the left does. They brainwash people so much to think it's all over. And then that's, that's what actually sets these people off to risk the life of Trump, is that someone is crazy enough to try. Well, General Flynn says, I hope that his inner circle knows that he's got a good security plan and I hope he has the right people around him. He told the viewers that the real battle lies ahead, urging Trump to prepare for all that war against the establishment. He said they will not go out without swinging. He speaks to the urgency. Flynn stated, number one, Trump needs to be very, very certain that his security is around him and that he trusts them. They have already tried a couple of times and they will try again between now and the inauguration. He said, that's just my opinion, but he said, I've seen this. Now, should we take his words as a grain of salt? Should we take his words and actually heed the warning? And I hope that, that he has Trump's ear and I hope that they are heeding the warning. Remember, you're trying to de-establish the swamp. You're trying to take all the people out of play. Well, remember, the people that's guarding you is part of the bureaucracy movement. Now, I know that some of those guys are probably phenomenal people, and the rank and file part of the, the Secret Service or FBI is great. But I don't know if I was Trump, I wouldn't just hire my private security. I'm a billionaire who is hated by the establishment in Washington, D.C. I'd make sure I had the people around me that I personally handpicked and they'd be the people who believe in the movement and wants to see America back in greatness. 
General Flynn says, be careful. That also goes for J.D. Vance. He has to be careful. Elon Musk, more threats on his life lately. He has to be careful. All this comes down to the rhetoric and the dangers of what the left is doing. Because people have lost their mind. I mean, look, look, just like the cities. I mean, the second story that we're going to be talking about. Cities are literally in peril. You know who is actually the ones leading these charges? Who's leading these protests? It's mostly illegal immigrants. They're the ones bringing attention to this. So we're allowing people not only to be in our country illegally, breaking in the law, in these cities, our taxpayers are paying for them, and now we're allowing them to protest in our own cities, our own states, our own nation? This is why Trump is starting to do a mass deportation process that will take place. This needs to happen. Protesting, if you're American, that's your right. Not rioting, but protesting. But it is not your right, if you're not an American citizen, to be on our streets, to vote in our elections, and to call the hand of our leaders to do something for you. That's where I'm very different. And that's not, a, that's not an unchrist-like thing. As, as a Christian, I believe that we should take care of people, but that doesn't mean take care of people here using our taxpayer dollars when we are missing out on the fact that there's record number of homeless people. There's record number of people living on the streets. There's record number of people that are tied up in drugs and trafficking. If, if we're going to be the heads and feet of Christ, that's where we should start with our own people in America and then go up from there. I know this is a cliche and I use it all the time, but it's like, if I can't take care of my kids, why am I going to try to take care of someone else's kids? It's the same precedent. We have to make sure that we build America back to where it once was, a city on a hill, a shining light. Then we can try to take care of the world. But that doesn't mean we allow everybody to flood our borders and to be okay with that. This is what I like, though. This is what I want to make sure that people see. And I think this is what the, the, the light, you know, anytime you talk about the sunlight, when you're in the sunlight or in you're in the light, the, the darkness comes out and you start seeing people for who they are. You start seeing the dirtiness. You start seeing the, the polarization. You start seeing the, the truth behind people, the dirty truth. AOC and all these people are now coming out and they're protesting with them. So I hope the left keeps doing that. I hope the left keeps going left. I hope they keep going absolutely crazy going left in this agenda to move away from the center because that only makes Trump's appeal, RFK's appeal, and Elon's appeal, and people like them even more embraced. So it's huge. Cities are literally, I mean, just a few quotes. Here's a few quotes. Thousands of protesters are marching in the streets of New York, protesting the anti-immigration laws and Trump's policies. It's amazing that they don't even know what these laws are yet. And for most people, look at the Native Americans. Look at the legal immigrants. Most of them all voted for Trump in bigger numbers than, uh, than Kamala. Currently, illegal immigrants from Ecuador and Peru are marching through New York City saying they don't want the law to be passed. It's amazing. We're giving them a platform to protest in our own country. Shame on these leftist cities. You wonder why your cities are in peril? You wonder why America is in a bad spot? It's because we allow this kind of stuff to happen. It's ridiculous. AOC appears to be giving marching orders and saying that we need agents of change. We need to go back to change. The Democrats' playbook is potentially unleashed Another wave of social unrest through activism campaigns with command and control centers operated through nonprofits. They're funneling money to nonprofits. Under the Trump administration, if Elon Musk wants to cut wasteful government spending and increase nation's security, the slash of government's ability to hand out grants like candy to the far left activism groups are done. And they're going to have to be done with oversight. So, see, that's why the left hates this, because their, their money is going to be cut off. Their spigots are going to be cut off. And the fact that we're actually going to have to obey the laws again. Why do we want this Marxist, communist anarchy? This is ridiculous. This is America. And until we get a hold of the cities, we will never change America. Did you see, overwhelmingly, the cities all went for democratic rule? They're tearing your cities up. Your Democrat leadership has never done anything for you. Why do you keep putting these people in power? Wake up. Now let's move on to two more stories. One more story deals with the Supreme Court, and this is where I have to press Republicans. Now one good thing is, like I said, Trump came out and said Pompeo and uh, Haley are not going to be in the administration. Another thing he said that he would support Rick Scott. He put in a tweet that he would support Rick Scott for a Senate Majority Leader. That's great. I, I think that's wonderful compared to Cornyn or Thune. Cornyn or Thune are just basically little puppy dogs, just like Lindsey Graham to McConnell. So they would still be ruling like McConnell, 
And if you look at their ratings, as a Republican, they actually have like an elf rating for most of the things that they quote unquote support. They tend to be more of a centrist Democrat than they actually are a Republican. They're rhinos, truly. So Rick Scott, not that he's my favorite, but he is a whole lot better than the rest of the ones there. What I said, and you may think I'm crazy, but you know in our Constitution and in sets precedent is that the Vice President always resided over and presided over the Senate. Why do we not make J.D. Vance the, not only the VP, of course, because that's what he is, but why don't we allow him to preside over the Senate and let him actually be the Senate Majority Leader? He is a senator, but also he has the experience there, and he is the rightful placeholder for who is presiding over the Senate. Why don't we allow that duty to fall to him and not worry about selecting a Senate Majority Leader? Why don't it be the VP? And I think that would actually help the avenue of getting things passed and making sure we stay with the movement of what Trump's trying to do with legacy and unity. Now, that probably won't happen. We understand that. So if Rick Scott's our best choice, he better be the one that Trump picks, and we better all support that. Now, the point of why I'm bringing up the Senate right now is the fact that there's a story from Zero Hedge that says, if you know Sotomayor, which is the one that um, one of the, the liberal uh, Supreme Court justices that actually was picked by Obama, is, is not in good health. And it says, uh, this is a story from Zero Hedge. Its original was from American Greatness. It says, Dems float plan to push ailing uh, Justice Sotomayor out of the Supreme Court so Biden can replace him before Trump is sworn in. Now, here's a few things. They said that this president will most likely pick two Supreme Court justices, one Sotomayor uh, and one Clarence Thomas. Now, a lot of the court is older other than the ones that were just picked from Obama and Trump. A lot of these guys are aging pretty well. Well, Sotomayor is one of them. And also, Clarence Thomas. Clarence Thomas is one of the best conservative judges we ever had in American history. So whoever is going to uh, be president is going to probably pick one or two, and maybe even three in the next four years, Supreme Court justices. This is why the Supreme Court is so important. And this is why the presidency is so important. And this is why conservatism is so important. Now, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get Sotomayor to drop out now so Biden can pick it. But remember, McConnell held it up last time, which I don't like McConnell, but that was the only thing I think in all the 30 or 40 or 50 years he served was that he held up Merrick Garland that time. Well, if they try to pass this, remember, we're not over the Senate, but it's so close to inauguration that I hope that they can prolong it with hearings and they can hold it. And Mike Johnson, the Speaker, and the Republicans in the Congress can hold it to where this person would not be passed. If Sotomayor chose to get out, then she wouldn't be replaced till Trump. Well, I think that's just a catch-22 for the Democrats because they're like, we want her to get out because we know we could probably throw somebody in there real quick. But in less than 70 days, you're going to have a new president. The president may be not there. So they're saying, do we risk it or do we hope that Sotomayor can hold on? This is a very big thing. And this is where Republicans have to grow a backbone, stand up, and not let this nominee uh, process go through if Sotomayor goes out. If she goes out and Trump gets to appoint someone that was in that liberal justice spot, and I'm not talking about some pansy like Roberts, he needs to appoint a staunch conservative. Someone like a Gorsuch, not so much like Amy Coney Barrett or, or Kavanaugh. I say let's go even more conservative, like a Clarence Thomas. Gorsuch has done pretty good too. We need a conservative justice there. And then, of course, if Clarence Thomas gets out in the next four years, Trump needs to appoint a juggernaut when it comes to the conservative stronghold. This is a big deal. Pay attention to this story. It's not getting traction because people are not talking about it much. But if you see her go out, you're going to see a massive push to get some leftist young person into that spot. They actually talked about Kamala. They talked about putting her on the Supreme Court justice. Be careful of this because remember, these sleazy rhinos tend to not have a backbone when it comes to these kind of things, and they let stuff lax. We don't need this to last. We need to stand firm and not let this new nominee to go through, especially before the new Senate and president gets instated. We're going to have Republican control. Do not mess that up 70 days before it. And lastly, we're going to talk about the Trump effect. You know, you talk about a strong leader. Guess what EU just said? You know, what, what y'all don't, what people don't realize is that the EU is buying tons of natural gas from Russia still to this day. Even though they dog them out, even though they're trying to have war against them, it's all just a big stupid scheme because they're still buying tons of oil from Russia. Now, they may go through different avenues and go through different countries, but it's still Russian oil. Well, guess what? 
when Trump became the, the elected president, EU bends the knee. Trump is the, the new talking point on this Zero Hedge article. It says, we could buy more American LNG, natural gas. So now, just before Trump is even in office, the Europeans are saying, well, guess what? We need to quit buying all this other oil and start buying it from America. So now you're already starting American natural gas and energy independence and surplus to be able to sell before Trump is even president. It says the EU is willing to buy from the Trump administration and he wants to make sure they have a good relationship. You know, that's again, goes back to the tariffs thing. That goes again back to the tax on all these places overseas. Trump is not saying he's going to give tariffs to everybody. What he's saying is this is going to be a negotiation ploy. Also, J.D. Vance came out and said something about the EU. He said, if the EU tries to censor Elon Musk, that helps us get out of NATO. That scared the bejesus out of this EU countries. So what you're seeing is two staunch, strong leaders when it comes to Trump and J.D. Vance making commands and making deals. And guess what? They'll negotiate it out to where EU can have gas and heat their homes. But not only that, you can see America strong again because manufacturing and energy independence comes back and then we're able to sell. It brings money back. Did you see what the stock market did this last week? It said that the stock market went up and added trillions of dollars to the S&P. The strongest it's ever been. That's not because Biden and Harris for the last four years. That's because the election went to the way it went. The Trump effect. This is what true leadership means. Now, I'm not going to say we're in the golden age. I believe that we could be in the golden age. We don't need a Christless revival. We need Christ in a revival. And we need to bring America back to its core values and mission. Being the bright city on a hill and understanding that God has blessed this nation and that he can use Trump and Vance, hopefully, to further his kingdom. Now, are they the most godly men ever? Probably not. None of us are. We're not perfect. But this is where I'm hoping that people in his cabinet are good, godly people and they can surround him and we, we can find peace again. We already see Qatar is getting rid of all their terrorists in their nation. Turkey has come out and said, Trump is the answer to end the war in Eastern Europe and, and Russia. You're already seeing the Trump effect take place, people. This is what real leadership looks like. Guys, let me know your thoughts on these stories. This is big deals. We can see energy back. Our economy is growing. Now, I honestly believe we're going to see a correction if we don't start strengthening uh, our debt situation and our money situation to tighten it up and to get on a balanced budget. But you're already seeing good moves happen. You're already seeing manufacturing maybe getting a plus because all of a sudden now natural gas may pick back up. What about the Keystone XL pump line? What about some of these other things that Trump has already said he's going to do? The battle of cartels, closing the border. You want to keep having massive protests in the cities by illegal immigrants? Keep electing the people in those towns, these Democrats. They're going to keep on going more left, and it's only going to make Trump look better. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Again, this is Sunday. Please take your family to church. Please find peace in Christ, because that is the only way that we're actually going to have America in its greatness. Guys, thank you for watching. God bless.